Hi, my name is Dave. Today we're going to have a look at the Vixen Photo Guide series of little tracking mounts. This one is called the Photo Guide MD, but it's very similar to the Photo Guide 50S uh, with a 50 millimeter guide scope on it and several other different varieties. This one is called the Photo Guide 2, and I don't believe there are too many different varieties of this one. So, uh, and we'll compare the two. This one dates from about 1981. This one dates from about 1991. And you'll see there's quite a bit of uh, improvement and changes and distinctions between the two. This is the Vixen Photo Guide MD as it probably would have been delivered. Okay, for starters, you could get an optional motor go right on about here where this goes. And I don't have the rest of the, I don't have the controller or the battery pack for it. But it would have just replaced this. You've got two ways of operating this. One here on the top and one down there. And I don't know exactly why they did it this way, but they did. They put it on the side here instead of normally where it would be on the bottom. Doesn't matter, it'll work just fine that way. Uh, let's take a close look at some of this other stuff. Down here you've got some very interesting features. This thing here, this is kind of a, a standard way of nowadays of adjusting the azimuth. So you have a, a push bolt here and a push bolt there. I don't know if you can see it, but that thing, this thing is turning back and forth. A little hard to do by hand. One of the things is you don't have any way down here of adjusting the tension on that. So you're kind of stuck with what you've got. If it's loose, you have to pull out a, a wrench and tighten it up and all that. So that's that's a little gimmick to that. Now as far as altitude, this thing has a spring-loaded kind of an altitude adjustment. There's a spring compressing in here. This is actually just to tighten it down. So you can change the tilt here. Now you've got a built-in tilt of, I don't know, maybe 45 degrees, I'm guessing. Uh, so you got a built-in tilt there, and then you're going to be able to adjust that for a few degrees one way or the other. You're not gonna be able to get all the way to 90 degrees and all the way to zero degrees. Uh, but you should be able to do most anything that's within reason. You can also adjust the legs to give you a little bit more range. Uh, some sort of a mid-northern latitude or mid-southern latitude for that matter. So you should be able to do something from, I don't know, maybe 30 degrees to 50, 60 degrees, something like that. Just guessing. Um, so that's how that works. That's quite unusual. This thing, of course, comes off here. And you could, if you wanted to, just put this head onto a standard um, kind of a camera tripod. Um, so you could do that instead of carrying all of this with you. This is a very nice, very useful, quite a nice innovation to be able to have that. Inside the axis, of course, is the polar scope. Um, fairly new innovation at the time. And they had sort of a complicated system with the vernier dial and the date and the time and blood type and all sorts of information you have to put in to figure out where Polaris goes in here. Nowadays you can do that with an app on your phone. This thing is very modular. The idea is that you could remove parts and add parts and do all sorts of things. It came with a kind of a cheesy, this is a really cheap ball head here. I have no idea why they did that. Um, I'm guessing this was the this is the lower cost model. I know that, so it only had one of these, and I think the idea was that if you didn't want to use this, it would also give you something like this. Now they, I didn't have one, so I made one. This is just a, a plug here that goes in here, much simpler than what was there a moment ago. Now you can pick your own ball head. I got a good quality ball head like this one. And now you've got a much more robust mounting system for your camera. Got a good ball head. 
Put your camera on there. Now with this ball head system, you can aim your camera just about any place you want to go. You've got all kinds of flexibility there. Now, over here is where you put your guide scope. And they, this particular model didn't even come with a guide scope. I don't believe. So you would have to uh, provide your own guide scope of some sort. And what they showed with the more expensive models was a sort of a little Altaz kind of a deal that you put on here. This is just for a little fine Altaz control. So that goes on there. You can adjust it. And this thing can be adjusted this knob back here so you can loosen this and adjust this this way and that way. So now you can adjust this, tighten it down, put a little guide scope on here. Now this is not actually the one that would have come with this, but it's kind of close. It's a, it's a 60 millimeter, the, uh, uh, the one that came with the slightly more expensive models of this was a 50 millimeter well, it was not a very good guide scope you don't need much of a guide scope for a wide angle lens now you would guide through the guide scope tracking here you track here guide take your exposure over here and and guide for 10 or 15 minutes <laughs> oh those were the bad old days of film there's a pretty serious design flaw with this mount. If you look at it, it's pretty easy to see what it is. This arm here screws in here. So what's holding this is, uh, this is threaded in and then there's a lock nut on here. But if any of that stuff loosens up, or if the clamp loosens up, this clamp really has to be pretty, pretty strong also. If any of those things loosen up, this whole thing because the gravity just wants to go south like that really, really bad. Um, so it would be pretty easy for an accident like that to happen. And I can imagine uh, they had a lot of difficulties with this mount. And they, of course, modified it for the next iteration. The Vixen Photoguide 2 breaks down into a few small parts like this. The tripod here is all integrated. So this, this just goes right on here, almost any standard modern kind of a mount, simple as can be, and of course you've got your power plug right in here, and your polar illuminator up here. If you wanted, with a little bit of effort, you can take the top part, just the right ascension, off. Now this part comes off at the bottom here. And that will fit on a standard camera tripod. Vixen Photoguide 2 could easily be confused with a standard German equatorial kind of a mount. It's got a counterweight, it's got a telescope, it's got a right ascension. Seems to have a declination. Well, does it really have a declination? Uh, this thing, let me show you what this is. This moves like so. So it does have declination motion, but it doesn't have any kind of declination slow motion. It doesn't have a slow motion control. Well, it sort of does with this particular scope on here. This scope is a special Vixen guiding scope. And if you lock it down, suppose we had it all locked down in some position, you do have a little bit of translation this way and translation that way. So you can move a little bit. If you're finding a guide star, that's probably all you'll need. You get somewhere close and then you'll tweak it in with a little of this and a little of that, 
and you get your guide star. By the way, this thing here, this is a special Vixen device for projecting a reticle onto any standard eyepiece. It's really a cool little device, and they showed this in many of the pictures with this particular mount. So this is a, sort of an equatorial mount. It's a tracking mount, that's for sure. This has even got a clock drive. Here's a clock drive. Here's the hand control battery pack. It even works. Um, but wait a minute, there's something missing here. Oh, forgot the camera. Yeah, there is a, a special way to configure. There are about 5,000 different ways to configure this thing. And one of them is to put a camera right here. Let me show you. We'll put a ball head right here. So we got a ball head right there. Put a camera right here. And the ball head and camera kind of uh, supplants or takes the place of the of the uh, counterweight here. So you really probably don't need that. Let's see how it balances. It's actually pretty well balanced like that. So uh, depending on what you might need here, you can remove the whole counterweight system here if you need to. Um, and just use the, the ball head and camera like that. So now with the ball head on here, you've got pretty much infinite flexibility about where you can shoot the tele, where you can shoot the uh, camera. Isn't that a nifty looking mount? And um, similar to the earlier version, it's got a kind of a more or less standard arrangement here for you know, a couple of push-pull bolts for aligning the uh, azimuth, so you can align the azimuth. And kind of a similar, kind of a push-type deal here, although this has got some ramifications. This push-bolt here changes the altitude, so you can use that, and then you lock it down with this. But there's a couple of wrinkles to this. Here's something very interesting about this mount. This seems to indicate that you should be able to go from 0 to 90 degrees. And there was a limitation with the previous version of this mount. And if you look at this, there's a limiter. Let me show you what the limiter looks like back here. This limiter back here, see this thing here? It only allows you maybe 15, 20 degrees, something like that. So that limits the amount of nits, you know, then you tighten it down with this and that locks it down even more completely. So then you've got no more trouble. So this whole device here is designed to limit the amount of travel, which would seem to limit the amount of latitude that you can actually get with this mount to about maybe 15 degrees or so. However, there's a wrinkle. This thing actually this is the strangest thing I've ever seen. Check this out. Okay, now I've got it loosened. I'm taking it out. What's inside here is a spring, for starters, and a ratcheting kind of a thing here. So there's a ratchet that goes up against this ratchet on the inside. And without that ratchet present, it can go pretty much anywhere it wants to go. Get a lot of travel. With this ratchet in place, that limits it to the 10 or 15 degrees or so. So all you would have to do is loosen the ratchet enough to shift things a little bit. You don't have to take this thing completely apart the way I did. If you loosen that enough, it's freewheeling. So then when you get close to where you want to be, you tighten it down. <laughs> what a strange deal this is, huh? Man, oh man. Better give it some flexibility so it'll find it. Find a ratchet. I'll bet the instructions for this are somewhere written in Japanese. It would be completely... <laughs> you, you would never figure out how to do that. Even if, probably even if you spoke Japanese, you'd have a hard time figuring out how to do this. Anyway, so now you can adjust this to 
virtually any latitude you want. There's a little indicator there that tells you you're at, uh, we're now at supposedly 80 degrees. If you're very good with your polar alignment, you might be able to get away with a configuration like this. We just have a couple of wide angle lenses on cameras and and shoot this for 10-15 minutes. If your polar alignment is good, I mean you'd have to have good polar alignment. But if your polar alignment is good, you might be able to get away with that. The Vixen photoguide systems were approximately the same size as the Takahashi Sky Patrol mount, um, and they had about the same capability. And they were pretty much equally portable. Uh, advantages and disadvantages either way, but uh, very comparable kinds of things. There were a bunch of these around that time. I hope you've enjoyed having a look at these Vixen Photoguide trackers. Thank you very much for watching.